All right, you guys, so hopefully by now you all have seen the video of this open wheel limitless, even with the rubber tires, I'm getting 144 miles per hour. That's my personal best at this particular moment in time. The limitless setup actually has, like I said, the rear wing, has the rear wing, the extended spool, down here and what else oh the locked front and rear differentials i put that in here and the wing and everything in order to continue speed running while i was waiting for the motor and esc to come back from castle for the other motor now that motor had or that limitless had the toyota body on it and i got kind of tired of dealing with that i felt like um the setup it just kept flipping, kept backflipping, kept crashing. So I'm kind of done with the GT body. I've gone back to the regular Limitless. So now I've got two open wheel Limitlesses. Limitlesses. <laughs> and uh, one's got the 1717 motor. This one's got the 2028 motor, both Castle. So what I plan on doing now, what I was going to do is as soon as I reached 140, I was going to call it a day, not do any more speed runs, and leave the car, whichever car did 140 or more, leave the car like it was, and call it. But that's what YouTube is for. And so now I've got the car, the speed, and the video all uploaded to YouTube. You guys saw what I got. I know what I got. I'm gonna take the, so instead of leaving the car as it is, I'm gonna swap back over the front and rear diff, the wing, and that center spool over to the 2028 Limitless. So we'll see what I can get out of this with the current gearing and getting everything back installed into here. Now keep in mind, this one actually had all the bearings upgraded as well. That one was, was old bearings. Um, so I'm gonna have the newer bearings, the locked front and rear back in here, the wing back in here, and then I've got foam tires coming in the mail, should be in the mail today actually. So I'll use my tire truer right there and get those all ready to go. And then K Customs on Facebook is sending me, well I purchased, a plate for this side that's very similar to the chassis plate that was on it before when I had the GT body on. But I kind of hacked it up and did something like this, so I can have the two batteries over here. But I wanted the body locking side skirts, and as well as the plate for the ESC and servo. Now, uh, I'll do an, an updated video on that, but uh, apparently with that plate, everything is gonna fit right in here. And in order to make the servo fit here, I actually had to use a smaller link here and all that is is two Traxxas E-Revo rod ends with a screw in the middle screwed together as well as used some very, very strong epoxy to keep that together. That, that is probably stronger than just a plastic link because it's got that steel and epoxy in there. So hopefully that length is good enough where that's going to sit right in here like this. And then the good thing about this design is with the ESC and that plate being there, I actually have just enough room to pull this spur off. I don't have to pop the ESC off every time I want to change. I'm sorry, the, the pinion. I don't have to pop the ESC off every time I want to change the pinion. So hopefully this build will look really, really clean when it's done. I got most of the wiring done already, as you guys can see there. Servo wire underneath the ESC wires right there and then all feeding into here of course the sensor wire so really really clean setup and with the help of k customs it's gonna look really good when it's done have the body back on and this body just barely fits over this esc you guys will see it but like you can see that locks down there and there so we'll see how it goes i'm really excited all right let me go ahead and get everything swapped over back into this 2028 monster motor limitless 
we'll see what we can get with it. All right, you guys, got a couple more packages today for the big motor limitless. Ugh. Picked up some Subway. Got these foam tires and I've also got this in the mail from K Customs. So this is the ESC and servo mount, some parts for that, servo mount hardware, body locking side skirt, and the plate, you see he's got K Customs there, plate for the batteries. So I'm gonna get all this installed into here and then I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like once I'm finished. Hey, what's up you guys? So after transitioning everything from the Castle 1717 Motor Limitless back over to the Castle 2028 Motor Limitless, this is what I've got. Um, ignore the front splitter missing. I'm waiting for a replacement to come in the mail but I did get two BSR or two sets of BSR tires. I got all four ready for another run. You guys already know the Ross Schifrin wing. The rest of this that I want to show you now that I've got it all put together is K Customs body locking side skirt. So you can see it keeps that from moving, keeps it from allowing air under the body. Same thing on that side. <clears throat> and then I've got this set up. So over here, you have this ESC and servo plate. You can see it, a couple mounts there, one mount right in there, and double sided sticky tape for this. There is literally no additional room left between the servo mount and this PPS motor mount. Um, so really tight fit. It's not going to go anywhere, but I do have double-sided sticky tape there. I was okay to go ahead and do the sticky tape because with this mount and the ESC oriented this way, I'm still able to get the pinion gear off because that ESC perfectly dips in, giving it enough room if I want to change out pinions, I can. The mod that I had to do, one you can see I've got the stock servo horn on, but the steering link connected underneath to keep that, you know, a little more parallel. But the, uh, the stock horn would have been too long. So I used two E-Revo rod ends that I sanded down and then used a screw where I've cut the head off or you can use a really long grub screw and threaded those on and put some epoxy inside so that's very very strong and yeah it's got plenty of clearance the only issue is if I turn you know all the way that way I guess I don't know if if I hit a bump or something where this tries to overturn it might hit this but um, really it shouldn't I mean you can see the the steering angle right there and then of course going this way there's plenty of clearance so I'm really happy with that um, this is a speed run car and really you shouldn't get this set up for anything other than a speed run car um, at least with this orientation and how everything's set up but you actually, I'm, I'm never going to be going full right, full left, unless I'm turning around. And even then, you know, I can set the endpoint adjustment so that it doesn't swing over and hit that fan. So there was that. Um, I did have to draw a couple of holes in the chassis, which is no issue. Just if you're going to do that, be sure to countersink. So here's one here, right next to the spool mount that I had to drill out. Make sure you countersink that so that it sits flush underneath there. The other piece is the battery tray. <clears throat> okay, so battery tray hooks up. And if you get the side skirts as well, which I recommend, um, you don't need any spacers or anything. You just sl slide that in, put the screws on, 
I did have to drill out, I believe it was this one here in order to get that, but you can see there's a screw there. And then we've got, let's see. Go ahead, uh, there we go. Two more right under there. So no screw right in this middle piece, but with one over there and two over here, and of course you've got all these, that being carbon fiber, that's really not gonna move. And it's really up against the chassis. So really, really happy with that. Um, these battery straps, you know, this one right here, if it were me, I'd have moved that down some so I can, so it can be closer to this. These two straps over here, I think are a little too close. It allows for a little too much movement this way, but having a strap across there, you know, helps that out. So no real concerns, but flipping it back around, I'm really happy with the wiring. You can see I had to extend the servo wiring because of the receiver being back here, but I've got that zip tied there so it doesn't get in the way of any steering. And then this is up and in front of the battery leads. Same thing with the um, sensor and the ESC wires that go into here and are in front of these batteries. That way, when I have the body on, none of that is getting in the way of the side of the body. And then the servo wire and everything else is protected in two different wire looms. They go right underneath the fan. I just zip tied it to the zip ties that hold the fan to the motor. You can see another wire loom going up, splitting off from here and going up to the back of the motor for the sensor. And then everything feeding right into the receiver box. The receiver has two antennas that need to be oriented uh, perpendicular to each other, so that's why that's like that. But yeah, really, really clean. The motor wires are just long enough to you know, connect there. And as you guys saw before I pulled the body off, everything fits really, really well. So really happy with this setup, especially thanks to K Customs. Um, they didn't send this to me, I, I paid for this. Um, they helped me out with some of the installation stuff that I had questions on, but this turned out really, really well. I'm really liking this setup. Let me actually take this back out to the garage. I, I'm in here because it was really hot out yesterday and I brought this in here and I was going to do a video yesterday, but I uh, didn't get to it. So it was still in here from last night. So I'm doing a video today. Let me take this back out to the garage and put it on the scale so you guys can see the weight distribution um, with the batteries on that side and everything oriented the way it is. Everything's settled down. All right, so we got 13 or three pounds, 13.3, three pounds, 13.3, three pounds, 2.0, and four pounds, 4.4. So a little bit heavier back here, my guess is because of the motor and that battery having a little bit more weight on the back end than up here. On the front half of it, you just got the ESC and the one battery over here. But I think overall, pretty well balanced. You're not gonna get any you know better than this. But overall, one, two, three, four, five, six, 79, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pounds, roughly. Maybe almost 16, so. Pretty heavy vehicle with this motor, but like I said, I think it's really well balanced overall. Stay tuned for a run with this particular motor. Now back in the stock setup instead of, or the stock body instead of the GT body. But if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like, leave a comment, what you want to see in the future, and any other recommended upgrades you guys have for me. Um, I think pretty much the build's done. It's just going to be about finding the right gear combination to get higher speeds. We got 144 with this limitless over here. And yeah, really happy with that. The 1717 limitless. That's what I'm going to call it because that's the motor that's in it. This will be the limitless 2028. Um, I might even get some stickers and put on the side. Put 2028 on this one, 1717 on that one. 
But yeah, really loving the support. Again, another special thanks to K Customs for doing what they do because they make this stuff really, really easy for guys like me. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.